All right, welcome back. Dan Williams with Survive Outdoors. Today, we're going to address the brown recluse spider, as promised. Uh, also, it's called the Loxosceles spider, the fiddleback. It has a violin marking on the cephalothorax. Uh, it should be known there's about 50 species of this in the world. There are 11 in the USA. And nine or 10 of those are really on the southwest margins like southern New Mexico, Arizona, uh, South Texas. The main one is in the south and central part of uh, the United States. In Illinois, uh, 20 years ago, it was all the way up to about Peoria Pecan, and now the brown recluse is up to about the Bloomington area. It's about 50 miles further north. And we're seeing that migration more and more as the years go by with global warming. That's actual measurable data, it's objective. Uh, these spiders are brought over by, from state to state by shipments of lumber and boxes. However, they don't in inhabit the area because it's too cold in the northern zones. The, the uh, spider is about the size of a quarter. Uh, the female's a little larger. I've seen them the size of about a 50 cent piece. They, um, the female has a little more venom than the males. The males have the larger pediopalps, the palps on the front to hold their prey. A lot of people confuse those for fangs. So I call these guys the introverted sociopath. They are not extroverts, hence the term recluse. You don't see these guys during the day at all. It's not sunny days. They like dark environments, um, wood piles, uh, basements, attics, things like that. They have six eyes as compared to almost all spiders that have eight. Very interesting. So, we survived outdoors 20 years ago. We were lucky enough to have um, one of the first uh, series of photos from a guy who got bit in Pekin, Illinois by the name of Dale Losher. He gave us permission to use those pictures and I have those today and we're going to show those progression on this video and we're going to show you the progression of a bite from day one all the way to his skin graft. And those will be go on this video sporadically throughout. So hang in there. And towards the end, we'll show you the final um, resolution of uh, Dale's bite. The venom on the uh, brown recluse is cytotoxic and um, hemolytic. So what that does is cytotoxic, it kills the tissue cells. And hemolytic, it destroys red blood cells. And hence what happens is, is that you get this classic tissue necrosis and death in the center of the wound. It um, should be noted there are no lab tests right now to detect brown recluse venom. Years ago, they thought they had one where you could get uh, take hair samples, but that was not reliable. So you can't even culture this and get brown recluse venom. So for providers or doctors out there to look at a abscess or a necrotic center and say, oh, that's a brown recluse, I can tell by the tissue and looking at it, it is total fabrication. I want to make that very clear. Uh, in 2014, the American Association of Poison Control, they had uh, 275 minor outcomes of brown recluse documented, 218 moderate and 11 severe. So what does that mean? A minor would be just a red mark on the skin and it's kind of red and irritated. And that usually is in the first 24 to 72 hours. And you'll see right now, I'm gonna show you Dale's first day bite. Then approximately nine days later, you can start to get some necrosis and death to the center of the wound and that would be like on day seven through day 12 or 14. And sometimes at that point, we have to excise and take that dead tissue out and get viable skin and get a bl good blood flow going. Um, sometimes in those stages that there's been some evidence that shows hyperbaric oxygen chambers help to increase the uh, oxygen to that area to help with tissue healing. Um, but again, I mean, where are you going to go to get a hyperbaric chamber? The closest one to where I live is up in Milwaukee, I believe. And then the severe, the, it can be in, as much as a month later or earlier, you can get um, a systemic reaction. 
And sometimes those systemic symptoms in kids you'll see in the first five to seven days, and you'll want to get blood drawn, and you want to look at the kidney function, you want to look at their white count, and you're going to check all of those uh, chemistries and labs. And there was only 11 in 2014 severe cases where they required hospitalization, and it should be noted none of these individuals died. Zero. None, no deaths. So now I'm going to show you day nine on Dale's bite, and you'll see there, it was after it was incised and the tissue was removed, it's a rather large wound on his leg. And it looks pretty nasty, but these wounds do heal. A lot of times they'll granulate in, and if they don't heal from the bottom up, then sometimes they'll have to do a skin graft. All in all, the brown recluse, due to media, doing all the hype has gotten a ton of bad press um yes it does call it can cause not in all cases some necrosis and skin death to the bite wound but very rarely does it get so severe like dale's um, that you get this massive crater should also be known that um, i wanted to mention that the brown recluse spider bite can be worse on fatty areas like on the thigh or a belly where there's adipose or fat tissue. It'll destroy phospholipids, um, not to get too medical, and that is part of the issue with um, a larger wound on fatty areas of the body. So, and then in closing here, I want to, day 11 and day 38 after the skin graft, you'll look at Dale's bite, and it did pretty nicely, it really did. And I really appreciate him uh, letting us use those photos around 20 years ago. That was great. So, how do you prevent this bite? One of the things you can do if you have wood piles next to your campsite or next to your home, move those away. If you're in a place in the south and you're camping or hiking in the morning, shake out your shoes, shake out your pants. Uh, just do those common sense maneuvers, behaviors that are going to help um, shake out a spider, a scorpion for that matter, if you're down even in Arkansas, extreme southern Illinois. So you're going to remove um, the bug, the critter that you're concerned about. So leaf litter, wood piles, shake out your shoes, just do some basic preventative measures like that. Very rare to get a bite. This is a very non-aggressive critter. It bites at night. A lot of times if you roll over in bed, that kind of a situation. Again, it's non-offensive uh, spider. So, if you have any questions, you got some feedback, throw it down in the comments below. That would be awesome. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Till next time, stay tuned. Keep your eyes on the horizon. Face to the wind. Stay safe, guys. Talk to you. Bye.